think celebrities are the gods of a secular culture. I thought about it the other day. I think celebrities are the gods of a secular culture. Sayla, welcome to POVs. I, I've only known you for a couple minutes, but I can already tell that I'm obsessed with you. So thank you for being here. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm so many things at once. Amazing. I'm isn't, that, isn't that the human experience? Right. So Sayla, every episode here on POVs, we always start off with a controversial question to get the juices flowing. So let's start off with this question. Do you think celebrities have a right to complain about their mental health? Mm. That's a really good <laughs> We're getting right into it. That's a great it. question. Yeah, so I definitely think that it's really about a balance, you know? To me, the bulk of this question is like, you're a celebrity, you're rich, you're famous, you're this, you're that. Like, what are you really complaining about? How hard it really is your job? Right. That's really the question. How hard really is your job that you're complaining? Like people have it way harder. Some people are, don't have homes. Some people, you know, live in like true poverty. Some people, you know, and here you are complaining about X, Y, and Z. That's one side, you know, that's like where, I feel like that's where that question comes from. I think that's like what a lot of people feel inside when they're saying that. It's like, what do you have to cry about? Right. You know, what do you have to cry for? But, you know, at the end of the day, everything is a human experience. And when we're looking at it from a comparative element, of course, it's like, when I compare myself to you, what do you have to cry for? Or I have nothing to cry for. But when I take myself out of like the comparison and I'm just assessing myself, how do I feel outside of like the perception and like the circumstances, et cetera, where am I at? And some, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I mean, I think for someone who's a celebrity, it, can it's more often probably good than bad or they have less of a reason but you know i mean everything that glitters isn't gold you know and that's i think what that's really about on the other side it's like people you know we fall in love with the glitter and like the shininess it's like oh their life must be so fucking amazing they're rich they're this they're that but at the same time i mean you hear about like stories of people who got locked in record deals and weren't allowed to drop a song for like five years like that's a crazy type of repression you know, that's a crazy type of experience. And I think someone like that should definitely be allowed to express how they feel or just to feel, period, because that is, you know, there's different forms of abuse. You know, there's the more obvious or, or forms of hardship. You know, there's the more obvious forms of like um, financial strife, um, physical abuse and things like that, like things that are more visible. But then there's also like repression, you know, there's um, people get caught, you don't have to understand, a lot of like the cele celebrity stories as well are rags to riches stories. So people who sacrificed maybe a lot of their principles and values to get somewhere because it may have came from a place where they really had nothing. So this is all they had, you know? And then they get there and they realize how much they gave up and that's another form of like imprisonment, yeah. you know, another form of strife, of hardship. Like that's a whole other battle, you know. Someone said, um, they said, fuck your nine to five and fuck your nine to five, do a creative job instead. It was, that was like, it was like a cute little Instagram post, meme thing, whatever. Someone made a comment and they were like, you know, I actually like my nine to five. They said, I actually like my nine to five because um, my art is really my art. I'm not commodifying it. I'm not, I don't have to change it for anyone. I don't have to do it in this time span, do it on, it's really free. And that's a different type of freedom, you know? And they're like, you know, I'm able to compartmentalize that and whenever I really genuinely, it's really for them, you know, versus like the commodity of art in which then now you like start doing things to assimilate into the popular opinion or right. into what's gonna sell, you know, and not maybe what you really want to express. And there's just different forms of freedom. There's different forms of, I've many, many times struggled with um, being born into that attention. Right. Being born into all of that. You know, you know? being the granddaughter of one of the greatest musicians of our time, Bob Marley, yeah. the daughter of Lauren Hill, that must come with a lot of responsibility. Right, you know? <laughs> right. And it's like, did I really ask for this? I don't know. But, <laughs> did I? Um, you know, in the sense that we all choose our parents and our souls, yes, I asked for it. But in the other sense, it's like, 
I know. I mean, me and my mom and me and my dad got into several. Se- well, me and my dad actually relate because he's the son of Bob Marley. So it's kind of like a similar, he grew up in that, right. did I born into type of situation. Whereas my mom, um, she was like, her mother was a teacher. Her dad was like, and her dad is, does a lot. Of, he does a lot of things, actually. He's like computer, also a doctor. He does a couple of different things. It's so funny. I was just thinking about this in a different way, but I was thinking about this, actually. But anyway, I've had many arguments with my mom, honestly, about not arguments necessarily, but like we've had tense discussions because I'm sure. like, yo, I wish I was normal. I, like, I wish I was normal. When was the yeah. first time you realized that maybe you weren't normal or you normal, were born, right? whatever into, that even this, means, born right? into this incredibly legacy-filled family? Young. Wow. Young, you know? Is your mom da-da-da-da? You look so much like da-da-da-da. Do you know who da 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 No, I mean, people come up to me on the street or like, it was just always the reality. It was just, that was just the reality. As a matter of fact, I thought he was normal. Mm. And then I went into real world and I was like, oh, yeah. And another thing that was just really unnormal for me is I would just get into like, I would just get into headlines at a young age, like sixth grade. Why am I on a fucking tablet in sixth grade? That shit was crazy to me. I was like, what's going on? But the thing is, I also grew up very normal in the same sense. Like I grew up in New Jersey for the most part. I bounced around a lot when I was younger, but I'm in New Jersey, I'm in public school, you know, with the kids. Shout out Mapso. <laughs> They're gonna fuck with that. Love it. They're gonna love that. They're gonna love that. Yo, I could list a whole group of people. They'd be like, <gasps> um, but I was in public school, you know. So I do have that strong balance. There is a strong normalcy there, actually. I actually, there's a there's a, there, there's a strong divide. Is really what it is. There's a strong divide. There was like this one hand. It was actually always an elephant in the room. Is really what it was. It was an elephant in the room. And how did you mm-hmm. personally reconcile that elephant? Well, I think I overcompensated because what right did I have to be mad? Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, of course I'm gonna overcompensate because I have no right, because I'm so-and-so. And because, you know, I'm in public school for real, now I'm like, I'm the only, now if I grew up in like Calabasas or like Beverly Hills or da da da, there's a bunch of like me's, you know? But, so it's a little different, you know, that's really normal, but it's just me and my siblings and we're like in some random suburb in New Jersey going to public school and we just so happen to be, you know, so it's the one, it's only like, it was a lot actually, it was actually a lot. But I think it just becomes normalized. I think it just becomes like, you know, it's just the reality. It's just a different, it's very unique. It's unique, you know? And I wouldn't take it back, I wouldn't trade it in, but it was interesting, but I wouldn't take it back though. I wouldn't take it back. I'm glad you had some sense of normalcy. I think it's probably better that you grew up in New Jersey and went to public school and had that connection to kids your age. Right, right. But that's also, it's an interesting thing for me though, because, and thus created my personality. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) No, not the shrink. Not the, not the. (laughs) Yeah, get cozy. Get cozy, right? We're we're going there. I love it. Freud, Oedipus Complex comes out. No, but, um. And thus created my personality. I, was, I think, I don't know, I'm, I just, I never wanted to make people feel uncomfortable because I think celebrity is, celebrity is a weird thing, you know, the concept. It's weird. Of it's celebrity. complex. We idolize people. You know what I think it is? What? Controversial. I think celebrities are the gods of a secular culture. That's a hot take. Mm-hmm. I thought about it the other day. Mm. I think celebrities are the gods of a secular culture. Interesting. And we have a secular culture, you know, we don't, we don't conflate state with religion, so it's but like... But would you say celebrity is religion, a type of religion? Stan culture. Yeah, definitely people worship. It's just worship. It's really just worship. And I think that humans have a natural propensity to worship things, you know, like a false gods type of thing, you know, false, it's idolatry. And I think America definitely is a big, like, celebrity, entertainment culture. You know, that's the whole 15 minutes of fame thing. That's the whole American dream thing. Everybody wants their spotlight, everybody wants their moment. And so for myself, having grown up with those two stark realities, it's interesting. I feel like I've seen many stretches of this world. I've seen like the highest, I've seen the lowest, I've seen the middle, I've seen like everything. And I relate to everything because I feel like it really is all the human experience, just different facets of the human experience. But there are things that are interesting about celebrity, quote unquote, but there are things that are very interesting about life itself. Yeah. 
that's just deeper than just like this one individual person. And I think another thing about being a celebrity is, you know how many people are going into this one thing? <laughs> like there's so many stories in this Absolutely. one room, you know? There's like 10 people here, 15, Absolutely. that go into like just two people, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of our current generation though, is social media and the ability to share that platform and spread the word, you know? I think celebrity back in the day, like you gotta think of Michael Jackson. I'm not talking about celebrity. Yeah. Michael Jackson, you know, like Prince, like people, 500,000 people concerts, like people passing out, you know, yeah. <laughs> passing out. Like, yeah. yo, that's crazy. Yeah, it's even, a crazy even, concept. it's a very crazy concept. But honestly, this is a little bit of a hot take. Drop this it. could be, this could be. There is also such a thing as natural born leaders. I think the ego can fight that sometimes. Everybody wants to, every Indian wants to be the chief type of thing. Interesting. You know, like, and so everybody, wants to put, you know, but. So maybe there's some I, human nature to it. There could be a human, I think there could be a human nature element. It's an interesting concept. Yeah, it's a very it's interesting, interesting concept. And I'm curious to know, how did that play out in your own personal family dynamic? Mm. With your siblings, with your parents? Was there any sort of structure? Did you feel a sense of normalcy within your own family? Mm. Well, I have a ton of siblings. So we've always kept each other a lot of company. Um, and, uh, you know, my mom, working woman, on tour she's like a fucking icon so <laughs> so she was always on tour you know my mom is like miss independent like she's like lord yeah, help you know <laughs> she's like an icon like literally yo when i talk to my mom and like her points of pov her points of view like well the word feminist is like a coined term now but when she was coming up that wasn't like as big of a word you know it wasn't as like as much of a thing it's not like on every sign like it wasn't you know yeah. but she just had those views like she's just so into women investing into themselves she's so into like freedom she's so into having her own identity she's so into like not letting her just the confinement of gender you know just because i'm a woman that means i can't da -da 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 -da. or because i do this that makes me less of a woman you know she's that's not she's just so like in, she's really into freedom you know i think that's what all of this is really about i think it's really about freedom just the freedom of expression from each individual you know and i think that's something that our country fights for civilly a lot especially today especially today like after like 2020 after like all these different experiences occurrences it's really just the freedom absolutely you know i think that in you know through like the history of humanity there's been a lot of different structures of thought and structure and that lead into like identities and yeah. like who you're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do and these belief systems and dogmas and stuff like that and you know i, I feel like life is cyclical you know like we create one, then we break out of it, then we create another, we break out of that. And we're Absolutely. just constantly evolving. Absolutely. You know, I think the collective consciousness is constantly expanding. Well, let's talk about one other element that I feel in learning more about you, <laughs> you've broken out of. I, I was reading as I was looking into your family that there, there were also some troubling times, you know, with your relationship with your mom and maybe even the absence of your dad. I'd love to know what was it what was it like reconciling with the absence of your father? And do you think the absence of black fathers contributes to different marginalized communities today? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a deep, deep, deep thing. So funny, I can't, <laughs> I'm never gonna live that down. That's crazy. Yo, mom, I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> Dad, they're gonna hate me. They're gonna be like, ah. But, um, well, yeah, so, well, this is the thing. I think there's so many different facets to it. Because for me personally, I am Lauren Hill's daughter, but I am also black, you know? It's two things. So it's like on the one hand, there's like this royalty element there. It's like, oh, you're like untouchable. Like what could you ever complain about, blah, 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 blah. But on the other hand, it's like, it's not like, it's not like an old money thing, you know? Like it's not like, it's like, it's not rags to riches fully. Cause it's not like they were in rags, but you know, it wasn't like some old money shit, you know? So that means that all of what it means to be black is still there. It's not like some different experience. It's more so that they broke out of it and our, 
you know, passing that on. And so, so I have many of the same experiences as like, just even though I am who I am, I also have similar experiences as like the absent father or just like, you know, my mother having, having like mother daughter like issues, you know, and I think it got reconciled through, I think my family, especially my mom, has always been very focused on healing. That's a really big thing. She's always been very focused on healing. Like she always understood that even if things were troubling in that moment, it wasn't gonna stay like that. Mm. She, that's always been a big thing for her. Like that's one of the biggest things I remember. She was always like, it's not gonna stay like this, it's not gonna stay like this, it's not gonna stay like this, it's not gonna stay like this. Almost a mantra. Like she just, she was just like, yo, it just can't stay like this. And so, you know, conversations that we had, growth that the entire family went through. Like growth I've seen in myself, growth I've seen in my parents, growth I've seen just like in the freedom that they were able to achieve that. Cause you know, it's like, well, first of all, they were young parents, that's one, so young. And then two, it's like, being a parent is really hard. It's very hard, like having like three kids and being like in maintaining your career and being 26. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Having like two kids by the age of 23 and you're also like a fucking touring artist, like, you know, like, and you're like paying all these people's salaries and like everyone's depending on you and then you have to raise your kids and then your relationship, is that still working? Is it not working? What's yeah. going on here? So, you know, I think as a child, as the child, you know, as children, we feel like we're self-centered. Everything's about us. We're like, mom, dad, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be. And I think I just had to see the humanity of my parents mm -hmm. and see and reconcile. Everyone had to grow, you know? I had to reconcile, like, they are really human. And as much as I want them to be, like, these godlike figures, you know, they're human. And I think every child, once you hit, like, 18 to 21 to 25, you start seeing the flaws of your parents. Well, sometimes you see it young, too, but, like, you kind of start accepting, you know, that your parents are your parents. And so I think that, you know, it's just one of those things where on the one hand, the way I feel is totally valid and the way I felt was valid. And we don't talk, we talked about it, you know. I, I mean, after that shit went so like public, I it was like, all right, well, now I really have to heal this, you know. Right. <laughs> I was like, I can't just do this for show. Yeah. So then I started and I like- I saw that, that was the video, right? Yeah, that yeah, That you were talking yeah, about yeah, your yeah, mom. Yeah, that's what, that's what that came from. But it was like this Instagram live I did. Cause I used to go on Instagram a lot. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Gen Z. Like I'm literally an Instagram baby. Like yeah. I grew up on Instagram. Absolutely. So to me, it's, I'm not on it as much right now because I'm just like, I need a break. But Instagram Live was like talking to friends. So then you start getting like personal and then you forget that you're Lauren Hill's daughter. Right. And that, see, this could be anyone. Like if it was anyone talking about, oh, my dad was in the room, they'd be like, oh my God, it's so sad. And <laughs> keep it going. But for me, it's like, oh, my dad was in the room. They're like, oh my God, your dad was in the room? <gasps> <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. So, well, granted, I get it. I get it. And I think for my family, to a certain degree, you kind of become a testimony mm -hmm. for people. You become an example. You become representation, you know, of, you become a symbol to them. And did of, you want that? Well, that's the whole thing. Did I want to be born into the whole, it's like, do I want it? Is it just my life? Do, do I have you to feel accept pressure it? to live up to certain expectations? Oh, definitely. I mean, I've always felt pressure my entire life. That's never going to change. That's just never going to change, honestly. I think it's one of those things, it's almost funny how much it's never going to change. It's never going to change. It's never going to change. But I do want to ask you, though, because yeah. I think I'm loving how you shared in the realm of POVs that you see things so many different ways. You have all these different experiences, both on the celebrity side of your life, both in the way you've interacted with your family and the way that you've been in different spaces. You have so many different POVs. So I know that that's my favorite part of like myself. I know. I'm so like, you're here. I'm so happy we're you. having this conversation. Yes. And I want to know what makes Sela Sela. What do you attribute your views to, and what else do you think you have now that is your own that isn't attached to your family? Right. Right. Definitely. Hmm. What makes me me? I don't know. I think I'm just me. You know. I can almost ask you that question, like, why do you want me here? You know? Yeah. It's like, why? Like, why? Well, I can tell you, know? you why. Oh, thank you. I, well, I think you're a Gen me. Z trailblazer. <laughs> and I think you. you do such important work in the community building space, right? Mm -hmm. You've created this incredible organization, Land of Libertude, where you're essentially driving social impact and social change through 
conversations like this and community building. And so I hope you know that you bring so much to the world outside of just being known as oh, yeah. the granddaughter, the yeah. daughter, but I think you bring so many unique perspectives Thank you. to the world. I really appreciate that. And I mean it. Thank and you. And I'm so excited to bring in the next segment okay. of POVs, cool. where we bring in different perspectives from the larger Gen Z community. So keep an eye on your phone. We're going to send you some texts oh, and awesome. you're going to read them out loud and react. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. That's cool. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> read it out loud. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, yeah, 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 this is so funny. Celebrity children have everything handed to them. They don't have to work a day in their life. Nepotism is so real. Kind of feels like a personal attack. How would you respond to that? That's so funny. Yo, I was making jokes about that all day yesterday. I was like, they're gonna say I'm a nepotism baby, nepotism baby, nepotism baby, nepotism baby. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm sorry. But what don't... would you say to that in general? Do you think that's true? I make so many jokes about this. It's a half truth. To me, it's a half truth. It's like getting an inheritance. That's what it's like. Interesting. That's literally what it's like. It's like your family passing down land, mm -hmm. except in this case, they're passing down social currency. Interesting. That's what it really is, honestly. Never considered that. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, like an inheritance, but it's a social currency inheritance versus a physical currency. Some people get, you don't even know who said that. The person saying that could have a fucking estate of a trust fund. It's like being a trust fund baby. Right. But ultimately, mm, I think that for myself, though, that's not fully, like, you have to understand, I have, like, six siblings, like, it's not the same. I don't know, it's like, yes, there are things that I've gotten, I've received, but there's also a amount of work that I have to do. Like, you think my parents are going to pay for me for the rest of my life? You know, that's just not, you know, you have to, there's going to be pathways that might be a little bit clearer, but it doesn't mean that I don't have to show up to it mm -hmm. in my, in a standard, and that's what the pressure is. It's like... There's a, there's a, I think everything's about balance. You know, I think everything in life is equilibrium because that means that, all right, you're a celebrity's child, you're so-and-so's daughter. So now we're really expecting you to do, you better not fuck up. So now I have to prepare to not fuck up. There's a lot of work that goes into the preparation of you being to even hold yourself. If I, you have to fill the shoes of like fucking Lauren Hill and like, so there's so much work that goes into that. Like, I, you know, I can't, I can't. <laughs> You know, yeah. so it's a half and half, like in certain things that certain things I've gotten in through inheritance and other things I've had to one, get myself, but two, also like, OK, now that I've gotten it, I have to make sure I'm worthy of it. It's more than meets the eye. And I it's think a it's, half and half. it's think interesting it's that half. you said social currency. I've never thought about that. OK, read it out. Anyone who works with Kanye is just as crazy as him because they're enabling his behavior. Ooh. Mm. what are your thoughts? For me to validate this sentence, I first have to agree with the base sentence, which is Kanye is crazy. And it's like, am I gonna validate that sentence first? I don't know. So let's start there. I'm gonna erase mm -hmm. that. And then for me to say anyone who works with him is da 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 da. Um, I don't know about that, actually. Just in the case of working with someone, it depends on what it is, first of all. It depends on what it is, like what that person did. Right. But, um, I don't know, relationships are deeper than that. You know what I mean? Like work relationships can become like family to a certain degree. So what if like this is someone who's known him for 10 years? Sometimes it's the work relationship that holds you together. Let's say someone's struggling with addiction. Are you just gonna abandon them? You know, mm -hmm. like, are you just gonna, you know? And I think that it's like work, family, friends, that whole thing. Like any in any relationship which you're building a deeper connection, it's not as easy to always just walk away from it. Now, if you're just like, the secretary, you don't have a deep connection with him, you don't give a fuck that much. Yeah, of course, you can throw in your two weeks. But if you're like creative director, best friend since 15 years old, we're from the same town. That runs deep. You know, are you yeah. just gonna abandon him because now this, it, it goes back to the whole like, everything that glitters is in gold thing. I don't know, I think that on the, I think sometimes it's a support system and I think that at the end of the day, he's his own man. So every, just because you work with him doesn't mean you agree with everything he says and does. It just means that you are gonna support him. You know, you are supportive. Yeah. It's the same way like your parents. Like, do your parents agree with all your decisions? No, but they like are always gonna love you. They're always gonna have a house for you. They're always gonna feed you because they love you. So I think it depends on the depth of the relationship. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think you can separate the art from the artist? Mm, that's a really good question. I was thinking about that the other day. Like me personally, you're like in general. Well, maybe in response to that message about Kanye, 
you know, can, or even how you mentioned earlier, Michael Jackson, or even the icons in your own family, can you separate? But this goes back to idolatry to me because this is the thing. People, this is the saddest part about art. And because art is often conflated into entertainment, and I think they're two different things. And on top of that, um, it's very unfortunate that art becomes this whole celebrity thing. Because honestly, there's celebrity, and then there's like also just art. Mm. And everyone is flawed. And it's like, celebrity is such an interesting concept because it's like it chooses you a little bit. Right. It doesn't always, sometimes you just drop the song on SoundCloud, people blow it up. Now they want you on morning show. Now they want you on this. Now they want you on that. Now you're a celebrity. You know, you were the thing a little too. <laughs> I was right. like, now it's fucking viral. Right. Now you're a celebrity. Now you have to like be responsible for. Da -da -da. It's the whole pressure thing. It's like, oh, now am I responsible for like everyone and everyone's like egos and emotions and you know. I think it's a balance though because I do think with great power comes great responsibility and that is true. But in the same sense, I think it is also important to humanize people, like let people be human right. as well. Because you know, like people, the same people who are mad have like a fucking cousin who's a fucking weirdo probably, or like have a fucking uncle, you know? <laughs> so it's, just, it's complex. Like, it's complex and everybody wants to project all their shit onto these people, you know? Like, because so I realized this, people project everything on celebrities because we see celebrities as inhuman. We see them as gods. Mm -hmm. And so you feel like the shit you say about them, the shit you think about them is never going to hit them. You're never going to feel it. Because in reality, that's the whole like Twitter fingers thing. It's like in reality, you know, people have all types of thoughts. You have thoughts about like your best friend. You have thoughts about your coworker. You have thoughts and you don't share them. You probably think your coworker is annoying or whatever, you know, right. and you don't share it because you have to actually deal with that person. But a celebrity who's getting 5,000 comments, a million followers, you don't feel like they're human anymore. So you just tell them everything. You tell them everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, at the end of the day, this is a person. And that's and that probably forces these people to go even to more, more into their shell. Now they're really even more distant. And now you're wondering, like, oh, why does this guy only pop out in hoodies? Why does this guy never come outside? Why does he not go to any events? Because it's a lot. It's a lot of energy yeah. getting thrown at you at once. You know what I mean? It's a lot of energy. Like, it's like, I need, like, a force field sometimes totally. for the amount of energy that gets thrown at you. But, but I appreciate you sharing that. In my opinion, modeling isn't a real job. It's just a trend that promotes eating disorders. Ooh. I kind of don't think that's true. That's a little spicy. I don't think that's fully really true. And it depends on what type of eating disorder. Because if we're gonna say it's just, it promotes anorexia or bulimia, then we, okay, maybe back in 1985. Maybe back in 1985, where there was only one type of model. I think nowadays it's not that anymore. I think it's not that anymore. Have you ever felt caught up in that as a model? Well, it's a little bit different to me because here's the interesting thing. So for myself, and this is the context of modeling, but I think it's also a cultural thing because I am black, but I'll tell you the thing and then I'll tell you why it's a cultural thing. So for me, I actually felt like I was too skinny. I did not like being skinny. I do not like being skinny actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's be completely honest. I don't like it's gay. But I don't, I really don't. I don't like when my thighs are too thin. I don't like when, and for me, my metabolism, metabolism is so fast that it's so easy for me to look like a twig. I don't like it. I don't think it, it looks sexy on me. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, but it's like, I felt like, and this is full transparency, I feel like I had the eating disorder of eating too much. Interesting. Because I want my ass to be fat or because I want, you know, I want, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, I think that's modeling though. I think that's more social media, to be honest. I really don't think that's fully really modeling because who's not a model today? Are we all models? Yes, like everyone who has a social media. You know, people ask me, because I've stopped modeling as much. People ask me, um, like, yo, do you still model? And I'm like, well, as long as I have a body. <laughs> it just means, it's just a, you know. But do I think it's not a real job though? Um, I think it is a job, but I understand what people mean when they say that, however, I realized something the other day. I realized that it actually is a job. And it is the job of being a muse, to be honest. And interestingly enough, that sounds a little conceited, but the thing is, is these artists, it's really design is what it is. It's really design and visual art. And it's kind of fucked up that we, it, it's, a, it's our society as well, the way we think, but it's also, it's, it, it's like the human is art, the person. And I think that that can promote a lot of like, mental shit because it's like everyone wants to feel beautiful you know right. what i mean so it's but 
in the strict nature of modeling, it's, I realized this the other day, I was at a show and it finally clicked for me. The model is the completion of the design of this. What is this if I'm not wearing it? You know, and so for the designer, it brings so much value when someone represents what they were trying to do and when they see it in real life. I literally, I had a conversation with them the other day because they were telling me about how this thing they did was hand dyed and like bows. It's like, it's design. Yeah. It's true design. It's an architecture, you know, and so the model is intended to complete that vision, you know, completely outside of all emotionality. The model is intended to complete the vision of the designer, of the artist. And they're supposed to bring their own art form to that. It's art, actually. It's an artistic expression that we've turned into a career. Similar to, think, similar to music, similar to sports. Right. It's, it's, it's its own a, category. It's own category. Yeah. Similar to painting. It's another form of artistic expression. However, the thing is, is that the human is the art. And I think that, you know, that can tip on the whole narcissism concept, concept of, like, this whole, like, obsession, self-obsession, like, who the fuck are you thing. But um, I think that is what it is. I think it's a half and half. I understand like the insecurity element, the eating disorder element, the body element, you know. However, I do think vanity is intrinsic to humans. And I don't think that that was born, I don't think that's born just out of modeling. I think that beauty is something that in like visual, it's the senses is what it is. Right. So it's much more it's than pleasure. Me. Yeah, it's much more than maybe that person who submitted that. Yeah, I agree with that. I think everything is, honestly, I think everything is so multifaceted and multi-layered. And I believe, I agree with every perspective to a certain degree. I understand every side of it. You know, I get that side, but I think that oftentimes we obsess, this is the duality of life or just like the balance of life. There's a negative, there's a positive. There's right. this side, there's that side. Does one, is one truer than the other? Right. Not necessarily. You know what I mean? They're just existing. Yeah. And. That is unity to me. <laughs> that is unity. I love that. that is unity. Because just like these dualistic perspectives, you know, these opposing perspectives, but at the end of the day, who am I to say that my perspective is right? Mm. You know, especially if it's just perspective. I think there are some like cardinal sins though, you know, in this for world, sure. for sure. Like, you know, like, you know, like right. certain things, they're like of fucked course. up. But like in the subjective element of the world, in like, do you like coffee, hot or cold? Like, it's like, you like it hot, I like it cold, tomato, tomato. You know, and I think it's so important to allow for, this, to create the space for people to have their perspective, you know? And because what happens is that when there becomes this right thing, now it's an, obs everyone wants to be right. You know, everybody wants to feel like they're on the right side of history. So it's like people kind of take, they relinquish their individuality to assimilate into the social thought process, you know, like into the collective thought. And it's like, okay, yes, we can all agree that so-and-so might be a good thing, but we're also allowed to have perspectives, you know? Absolutely. And I think that when we create room for perspectives, you allow for depth. I don't ever feel like anything's one ever super black and white or that anything's ever really a negative. I think it just, you need to talk. Absolutely. And keep going to the deeper layers. Where's of the nuance these days? The nuance. That's why I'm no, so. No, it's the word. I'm that's so. That's the word. Exactly. That's, that's the word. I'm just so grateful hearing all of your perspectives you. today. <laughs> I think what I'm taking away from this conversation is how you have so many unique POVs on the world. And mm -hmm. I really respect that you also want to create a space in your own life to hear different points of view and curate these conversations. Thank so Selah, I have one more question for you, okay. which is here at POVs, you know, we're a Gen Z platform. So if you had a megaphone and you could share one message with our entire generation, what would it be? Woo, with the generation. I love that. Okay. Hmm. I think it's a couple bullet points. Thing number one with the generation is you have to get off the phone. You have to get off the phone. That's the first thing. Get off the phone. Put it down. Just put it down. Just put it down. Like after you're done watching this, just put your phone down. <laughs> you feel me? Like just put your phone down. Yeah. Put your phone down. You I always like I mean? to say phone down. Phone look up. down. Because I feel like our generation is plagued by the addiction, the technology, technology addiction. We're addicted to technology. We're addicted to convenience. So I'm a big like anti-convenience person a little bit. I like to cook my own food. I like to clean my own house. I like to, like, you know, like you can do a tax rabbit. You can do an Uber Eats. You can do with this, you can do, like, I like to do things with my own two hands because I feel like we're a little too disconnected from our bodies and from, and thus being disconnected from our bodies, we're not disconnected from each other. And we're now too self-conscious, you know? And I feel like we need to like be like less self-conscious and more like other conscious. 
I actually said that the I other love day. That. No, seriously, I feel like less self conscious and more like more freedom. Mm -hmm. Just speak. Like I feel like everyone we're so we're too cerebral as a society now because we're so on our phones. Our brains aren't working so much while we're just vegetables. You know, like I do it all the time. Like I'll be laying down literal vegetable for like hours, and then my my brain is like consuming all this media, and it's too much. It's overactive. It's overdrive. Like. Go run, go for a jog, go biking. I've been biking lately, it's amazing. I don't know, and I feel like I'm someone who definitely suffered from that. I had to like literally delete Instagram. I had to just like, well the app. I had to delete the app. I had to just like get off the, f it's too many screens. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's too, like damn, like what happened to just like existence? Right. You know? But like that's such good advice, phone down. Yo, just put the phone down, like just be present. Now it happens to be like digital stuff around us, but we are present right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And I feel like it's so important to just in encourage people to do more of this. I want people to do more of this. I want this to be a representation. I want this to inspire people to do more of it and just talk, you know, and just talk and just be free. Just be free, you know, not feel like you have to always say the right thing, you know, or like just be yourself. You know, I feel like I see so much like correction, self-correction all the time, you know? And for myself, I'm just, I don't know, I'm a very like, whoo, type of person. Like I'll come in and I'll just, oh I'm almost a little obnoxious, I'm almost a little obnoxious, but really I'm just one, not self-conscious and two, well, I'm a little self-conscious sometimes, but once I'm in my zone, it's gone. And then two, um, you know what it is too for myself, just side note, I realize this, I just need to get this off my chest, I realize this. I, I feel like, I, I don't always like hogging the energy, if that makes sense, mm. you know? I'm like, damn, why am I talking so much? Like, what the fuck? Like, there's mad other people in this room. But, um, you know what it is, though? I really, really, really just, I like to make other people happy. I think that's, like, a driving thing for me. I've noticed that. Like, I love seeing other people smile. I really do. Or, and I love being the reason that someone smiles. I don't know. I think it's a little selfish. It's a little self-centered, but I really do. What I like is how you emphasize that we should all do more of this. Right. I think our platform is really designed to create the space to be present, right. to have the conversations you're talking about, and to feel that freedom to be yourself. And so I'm so grateful that you were here today, Sayla. Thank, Thank you for setting that example to oh, our generation. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm to be excited. present and to be who you are. And I'm just excited to keep watching your journey. I'm excited. Get over here. Right? You're awesome.